Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to this lecture on transition metal organometallic chemistry from principles to applications. In the last few lectures we have been discussing an important topic particularly that of transition metal carbene complexes, their properties, their synthesis and their structural characterization. In this context we have learned that there are two classes of this type of transition metal carbene complexes, they are mainly called the Fischer carbene as well as shock carbene. We have also looked into various synthetic strategies that have been employed in preparing these two carbene complexes mainly the Fischer carbene as well as the shock carbenes. And shock carbene. We have looked uh, into their preparations we have, we have also uh, looked into the metal carbene uh, reaction the bonding in these complexes. With regard to bonding we mean the interaction of the carbonic moiety with that of the transition metal and how uh, these uh, leads uh, to different kind of reactivity for these uh, two types of carbene complexes. We have also looked into structural characterization or characterization of of these complexes. And uh, this we had uh, discussed particularly with respect to X-ray single uh, crystal diffraction studies. Studies of this kind of complexes. So, uh, this had been the uh, sort of uh, the topic that we had discussed in our previous lecture and in this uh, today's lecture we are going to elaborate these characterization methods as well as reactivity of transition metal carbene complexes. Uh, in continuation with our previous uh, discussion on structural characterization of a Fischer carbene uh, complex whose structural uh, parameters were discussed in the previous uh, lecture, we are going to now take up one example of structurally characterized example of a shock carbene complexes complex and see how uh, they co compare. Uh, with that of the earlier discussed uh, Fischer carbene complexes in terms of their structural integrity and uh, other uh, parameters. So, with this uh, let us uh, take a, a look at a, a structurally characterized shock uh, carbene complex particularly that of uh, transition metal uh, BCP CH2, CH3 and the uh, the structure of this molecule is tantalium bound to 2 cyclopentadienyl ligand with methyl moiety and a carbonic moiety. So, this uh, compound 
contains a tantalum carbon single bond as well as a tantalum carbon double bond. And as a result, if, uh, that is uh, obvious from uh, the bond uh, distances, uh, this tantalum methyl bond is much longer at 224 picometer, whereas because of its multiple bonding nature, this tantalum carbon bond is way shorter uh, at 203 picometer. And uh, the angle uh, uh, over here is uh, uh, the angle between the uh, 2 CP and the right uh, tantalum is 138 degrees, whereas uh, between the uh, 2 tantalum carbon bonds, this is about uh, 95 degrees. So, uh, uh, obviously, uh, uh, it is it can be seen that X-ray uh, is extremely good technique for differentiating uh, the bond uh, that exists uh, between uh, tantalum and the car uh, carbon of a methyl moiety as well as that of a tantalum and a carbene of a carbonic uh, moiety. And it shows that because of the multiply bonded nature, tantalum carbene bond is significantly shorter. Uh, then that of the uh, tantalum um, methyl single bond and that can be easily distinguished uh, uh, by using X-ray diffraction uh, technique. Now, we are going to look at uh, the, uh, some of the general characterizations uh, 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 thing that uh, uh, can be obtained through structural characterization and uh, what one sees that uh, these uh, uh, geometry about the carbon center is trigonal planar. At the C carbene is trigonal planar. Which means that the metal and the carbene and the two substituents and the carbon, they all lie in the same plane. They all lie in a same plane in a, a displaying a trigonal planar geometry. Also from the metrical data, uh, what one establishes is that the hybridization of carbon is approximately sp2 carbene hybridization is sp2 type. So, that means that uh, this carbonic center is sp2 and these bond uh, angles are somewhat about 120 degrees. Uh, now, in our earlier example of a Fischer carbene complex, what we saw that uh, these uh, metal carbon alkyl substituents, these bonds uh, have uh, expanded from 120 degrees to somewhat uh, 128 or 130 degrees and as a result this alkyl carbon alkyl bond has contracted from the uh, ideal value of 120 to about 110 uh, degrees. So, uh, what we see that uh, this being a sp2 center ideally should be 120 degrees, but uh, uh, in specific examples uh, they may open up from uh, uh, the more ideal value of uh, 120 uh, to about 130 degrees, whereas the alkyl C R angle uh, in turn may sort of become uh, smaller. The metal uh, as uh, observed uh, uh, in our earlier example, Schrock carbon example, where uh, there was uh, simultaneous presence of a metal carbon single bond as well as metal carbene bond. Uh, multiple bond and what we saw that metal carbene M C carbene 
bond is significantly shorter than metal carbon single bond. And uh, that uh, is significantly shorter. Uh, so, that is something that uh, we had seen and that arises because of uh, metal carbene bond being multiple uh, bonded in nature uh, as a, uh, owing to the presence of carbon to metal sigma bond as well as metal to carbon uh, back bonding in nature. Uh, also in our last example, we had seen that uh, uh, with respect to carbon monoxide metal C carbene bond is longer than metal CO bond, carbonyl bond. Uh, uh, um, metal carbonyl bond as a result of greater metal uh, d pi to C C uh, uh, P pi interaction in carbonyl complex. So, what we saw that owing to greater uh, pi acidic nature of the uh, CO ligand is more pi acidic. What we saw that owing to greater pi acidic nature of the CO ligand that uh, the metal uh, back donates more to the uh, empty pi star orbital of CO as a result this metal carbon bond carbonyl metal carbon bond of metal carbonyl compounds are way shorter than that of the metal carbene bond because here the back donation is not as acute as that in metal carbonyl complex. Also of, of for a Fischer carbene what was uh, seen from the structural characterization data is that um, uh, the C x bond where x is an heteroatom is shorter than a, a single bond and this was because of C P pi to x, x p pi to c p pi interaction. And what we see that uh, the carbene center is stabilized by the uh, metal uh, orbital and this can be explained uh, by in this diagram where we have let us say a uh, heteroatom attached to a carbene. and uh, the heteroatom um, is in has a uh, the, uh, the lone pair and then there is this empty uh, orbital on the carbene uh, and that uh, can interact Uh, this empty uh, this is empty and this is the lone pair uh, uh, pair so filled and this uh, is filled. So, this empty orbital can be stabilized by electron donation from the metal as well as from uh, the heteroatom lone pair as a result uh, this C x bond uh, as a result the C x bond uh, because of this interaction uh, is shorter uh, uh, than 
uh, C X single bond C X bond uh, in carbene is shorter because uh, of this stabilization uh, uh, or conjugation of its lone pair onto the uh, vacant PZ orbital of the carbon center uh, uh, resulting in multiple bonding character between the CX bond as a result it becomes shorter than that of a single, uh, single bond distance. And this is mainly observed in case of Fischer carbene complexes. So, uh, overall what uh, comes out that a lot of information can be obtained from structural uh, data uh, using single crystal x-ray diffraction, uh, uh, diffraction studies particularly looking at uh, various bond lengths and bond distances of the metal with the carbon or the heteroatom with that of the carbon and that gives one the extent of uh, relative uh, uh, interaction. Uh, that is prevalent in each of these uh, uh, moieties. So, this uh, x-ray thus is a very good parameter for obtaining an understanding of uh, the interaction prevalent in these classes of compounds. So, now uh, we will see that other than x-ray uh, for example, other uh, spectroscopic technique like IR Raman is also useful uh, in understanding uh, these uh, metal carbene interaction and particularly this is uh, prominent in uh, carbonyl complexes uh, which uh, shows a lot of uh, variation in uh, metal carbonyl uh, stretching frequencies, CO stretching frequencies as a result of back donation from the metal. And I am going to illustrate this with an example uh, showing uh, uh, the change in CO stretching frequencies as a result of back donation from the metal center to the CO and how that can uh, uh, provide input onto the electronic nature of this uh, carbene complexes. So, for example, uh, very useful data can be uh, ob obtained uh, using IR or Raman spectroscopy. Uh, for example, for chromium hexacarbonyl new CO stretching uh, frequency this being a, a symmetrical molecule one is one can only observe in Raman which is 2108 centimeter inverse. Whereas, uh, for the uh, the new CO strands trans to carbene appear at 1953 centimeter inverse suggesting uh, that there is more electron donation from chromium to carbonyl in this compound then in this suggesting more chromium to carbonyl back donation occurring in CRC OME CH3 than in CrCO6. So, that shows that uh, carbene is a very uh, a weakly pi acidic and uh, strongly a sigma uh, donating ligand implies been is strong sigma donor and weak pi acceptor. And when one moves uh, uh, from uh, Fischer carbene 
to n heterocyclic carbene complexes of the structure CO5, CR, having 2 nitrogen and methyl, methyl then new CO trans to carbene. These carbenes are called NHC, this is called NHC, so new trans to carbene. Uh, appears even down uh, at lower energy at 27 centimeter in, uh, inverse. This implies that NHCs, NHC is a very strong sigma donor ligand. Hmm and no uh, with uh, extremely poor pi accepting nature. Uh, so, what it shows that uh, how the metal carbonyl, uh, how the uh, metal carbonyl frequencies shift as a result of uh, this metal to carbonyl back donation uh, that appear in complexes uh, where their carbon uh, is a ligand along uh, co-ligand along with metal carbonyls. For example, in this chromium Fischer carbene uh, carbonyl complex, the carbonyl trans to chromium show a stretching frequency at a much uh, lower energy uh, as a result of uh, strong chromium to carbonyl uh, interaction which arises because of electron donating nature of the carbon moiety. Now, as one goes from Fischer carbene on to n heterocyclic carbene, which is even more electron do, uh, donating as compared to the Fischer carbene, uh, as a result the metal carbonyl uh, uh, interaction gets even more stronger resulting in much lower uh, new CO stretching frequency at around 1927 centimeter inverse. So, uh, uh, this uh, mixed uh, carbonyl uh, carbene complexes provide a good handle at looking at the extent of electron donation uh, that occur between uh, carbene and the metal center and as well as the co-ligand uh, uh, carbon monoxide and provides a useful tool for quantification of electron richness of this carbene uh, uh, by uh, looking at a series of this kind of complexes. A good illustration of such ele electron uh, donation occurred in metal carbon complexes uh, uh, having co-ligands uh, uh, as carbenes is uh, shown in the example discussed uh, uh, here. Now, thus uh, IR uh, provides a, a very good uh, example of how this uh, can be used uh, to gain insight into the pi acceptor and sigma uh, sigma nature of these uh, ligands. Okay. The apart from IR, uh, carbon NMR is also a very useful uh, method uh, uh, where one can look at the chemical shift uh, and then try to uh, guess at uh, the type of reactivity uh, uh, that they can show. And what is obvious from here uh, that uh, this metal carbon resonance uh, spread over huge range and that one cannot obviously uh, sort of, uh, uh, of uh, distinguish. Uh, their reactivity by just by looking at their chemical shift. Okay. Uh, so, 13 C NMR, in 13 C NMR uh, uh, the C carbene resonance spread over a wide range. And uh, for example, uh, one can uh, sort of uh, see that for CP2 methyl tantalum CH2 13C NMR 
del p p m this is this is arrives at 224 whereas for another shock type uh, compound t butyl ch2 hole 3 pentalum c t butyl hydrogen this comes at 250 and then co5 chromium my carbene hydrogen in me2 this is the fischer carbene this has 246 ppm uh, chromium 5 co5 chromium c th ome this comes at 351 ppm co5 chromium c ph ph 399 ppm and one uh, when one looks at the reactivity reacts as Uh, the uh, uh, there, uh, there is no correlation as to kind of reactivity that is uh, disclosed for example uh, display for example uh, this shock carving having a uh, chem uh, chemical shift of 224 ppm in carbon uh, reacts as a nucleophile whereas uh, uh, the tantalum one which also has somewhere very close chemical shift of about uh, 250 reacts as a nucleophile whereas this fischer carbene uh, which is also exactly of similar uh, chemical shift uh, behaves completely different and reacts as an uh, electrophile mm. and uh, uh, this another uh, fischer type carbene uh, showing at uh, uh, appearing at uh, very high carbonic resonance of 351 uh, uh, also behaves like an electrophile uh, to that of uh, 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 chromium carbonyl appearing 399 uh, also uh, react as a electrophile. So, what we see uh, what can one can conclude that uh, uh, the carbonic uh, moiety appear uh, in a wide range from 220 to about 400 ppm and uh, they uh, can appear in any of this range and it is very difficult uh, to predict the reactivity just based on the chemical shift carbon uh, resonance because uh, uh, we can uh, have uh, fischer carbene or Schroff carbene showing almost near equal uh, chemical shift, but uh, showing extremely opposite uh, reactivity. Yeah. So, this uh, 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 is consistent with the fact uh, that uh, the, uh, the carbon resonance uh, indeed uh, vary uh, a lot. Uh, for example, for the tridel cation CH3 plus uh, that this del is 212 uh, ppm uh, and for uh, methyl Me3 plus uh, this is 336 ppm. Uh, so, even for this cation on going from the methyl to phenyl substituents there is a huge uh, uh, the difference in chemical shift. So, from the uh, carbon characterization one can say that even though uh, the carbon moiety has been characterized, but any uh, uh, attempt to draw correlation uh, based on, uh, on, the, uh, uh, on their chemical uh, uh, shifts on the reactivity of these complexes uh, may not uh, be useful because uh, there may be carbon complexes which has comparable chemical shift, but uh, probably a, a equally opposite kind of reactivity as can be seen from this uh, Schrock and the uh, fischer carbene uh, complexes uh, which uh, behave totally different uh, live to each other. So, with this let me conclude uh, uh, today's discussion. Uh, we have looked at uh, various characterization or methods that are often used for characterizing uh, metal carbon complexes. In this regard uh, we started the lecture by looking at uh, structural characterization of Schrock carbon complex and looked at how the metrical uh, data uh, can indicate uh, 
uh, uh, towards the kind of interaction that is prevalent between the carbonic moiety and the metal center. Uh, having um, looked into that, we have also looked at other forms of characterization which provides insights into the metal carbon interaction and that included IR Raman spectroscopy where we saw that how uh, 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 heteroelectric complexes of transition metal carbonic moiety and carbonyls can be used uh, to quantify the extent of uh, electron donation the uh, carbon offer onto the metal center by looking at uh, the metal uh, carbonyl uh, stretching frequencies and uh, how that can be a, made a useful tool for analyzing uh, the electron richness of the, uh, in, uh, the carbon ligands that are bound to the metal center. Uh, from the examples that we have discussed, we have also seen that carbons are predominantly sigma donor with very little pi acceptance ability and that uh, when a carbonic uh, moiety is attached to a metal carbonyl complexes, uh, the metal becomes uh, more electron rich mm. and as a result the metal carbonyl uh, bond trans to the uh, carbon moiety a, a shows uh, CO stretching at a much uh, lower energy arising because of the more uh, uh, metal to metal carbonyl uh, uh, back donation interaction. We have also uh, discussed about carbon uh, characterization, car C13 characterization of carbonic uh, moiety and what we have seen that and this carbonic resonance of car uh, can appear uh, in a widespread range of uh, chemical shift and that it is not useful for uh, characterizing the reactivity uh, directly with their uh, carbon 13 NMR uh, uh, resonance. So, with that uh, let me conclude uh, today's lecture. Uh, we are going to be discussing carbene a bit more uh, details as these are very important molecules uh, having a uh, lot of uh, applications in chemical catalysis and also has been recognized by uh, the Nobel uh, uh, Award uh, in 2010 for olefin metathesis. So, a uh, lot more of carbene and more uh, insightful discussion in the next lecture uh, in, in terms of their propertivity and reactivity that we will look up. Uh, uh, that is going to come up in the next lecture. lecture. With that, I thank you for being with me uh, and I look forward to being with you in uh, next lecture. Uh, goodbye.